Amen. Amen. Rise right, so up as we pray together. Everyone, adult church, the youth section, and the children's section, we're all together now. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We show gratitude for your love, for your affection, for your plan of salvation. You gave the best of heaven, your only begotten Son, so that everyone in the whole wide world can have the benefit of coming back to the very bosom of the Father in heaven. We're asking, Lord, at this time, that this love will reach out to every heart, penetrate every heart, and you will do what you have planned to do in reconciling us with yourself and giving us this salvation the only means of getting to heaven after we leave this world. Lord, we pray that everyone's heart will be open to your word and to your love and to your redemption and to your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. God bless you, you can sit down. We're considering Jesus, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the Son of God. And now, Emmanuel, Jesus, the Savior. In Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he 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 no more do we look up to Moses in the law to David in the Psalms to Isaiah in the prophets no more do we look up to the founder of any assembly, the founder of any congregation, no, no more? Do we look up to the foundation of any religion? Because now he shall save his people from their sins. The only savior, the unique savior, Give it to all men by which we can be saved. His name is Jesus. Actually, that Jesus in the original is Jehoshua, which means Jehovah saves. The plan of salvation, the goodness of salvation, the result of salvation, the evidence of salvation only comes through Jesus. Jehovah saves. He is the only one. There's no other name given among men in any generation whereby we could be saved. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he, the Lord, he, Emmanuel, he, God, the God that is with us, the God who came to this world and he lived in this world, a sinless life, a perfect life, and then he went to the cross and he died for us. He, that only Savior, Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. Emmanuel, Jesus, the Savior. There are three points we're looking at. 
Number one, Jesus, the only Savior of all sinners. Number two, justification. They obtain salvation from the Savior. Number three, they justified. Those who are saved, they justified. Those who are converted, they justified. Those who are truly, truly born again, they justified the obedient soul after salvation. Look at number one. Number one, Jesus, the only Savior of all sinners. All sinners in every nation all sinners in every place all sinners in every generation all sinners in every continent and country all sinners anywhere everywhere all sinners religious all sinners traditional all sinners are righteous everywhere jesus the only savior of all sinners look at acts chapter 4 reading from verse 10 it says be it known unto you all no exception everyone should hear everyone should know everyone should understand everyone should apply the word to himself be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel and to all the people of this nation and to all the people of all nations and to all the people everywhere in the world that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, even by him, by Jesus Christ, both the this man stand here before you whole that's what he came to do he came to make us whole in the spirit in the soul in the mind in the body he comes to give us completeness he comes to add whatever was subtracted from our lives at the time of the fall of man and now his name through faith in his name he makes us complete whole in verse 11 it says this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which is become the head of the corner look at verse 12 in verse 12 he now tells us neither is there salvation real salvation heaven saint salvation life changing transform uh, uh, salvation transforming the life of people through that salvation it says neither is there salvation present salvation future salvation final salvation neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it tells us christ is the only one that the father has appointed the father has approved the father has anointed that anyone to be saved will be saved 
It tells us in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, it tells us in verse 30. Acts 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. It says, Him, Christ. Him, Emmanuel. Him, Jesus. Him, as God exalted with his right hand to be a priest and a savior. The Father, the God of heaven, the God of the whole universe, he raised up Jesus to be a priest and he raised him up to be a savior. Appointed, approved, anointed, and now we we accept him savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sin understand he is the only savior of sin of sinners that have been given unto us it tells us in first timothy chapter 2 from verse 3 but this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior verse 4 in verse 4 he says who will have all men to be saved he wants everyone saved he wants you saved saved in a definite way saved at a definite time saved in such a clear manner that heaven will attest to that salvation there may be people who carry on who carry about a salvation not approved of the father self-salvation pretended salvation hypocritical salvation a make believe salvation but the salvation accepted of the father approved of heaven that is evident from heaven and on earth that salvation he wants to give all men and to come to the knowledge of the truth when we're saved we come to the knowledge of the truth and then he says in verse 5 it was in verse 4 in verse 4 it says you will have all men to be saved you will have you to be saved and if you don't have assurance of salvation if you're only religious and the spirit of god is not bearing witness in your heart that you are truly saved he wants you to come to that knowledge of the truth of salvation right now verse 5 it says for there is one god and one mediator only one only one it is not a one mediator for africa one mediator for america one mediator for asia one mediator for men one mediator for women one mediator for the religious one mediator for the traditional only one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus the man christ jesus if the lord is going to have you in his kingdom established in his kingdom known with evidence that you are living the kingdom life there's only one person that can do that christ jesus look at verse six in verse six who gave himself he gave himself so that you and i will be saved 
he gave himself so that you and I will have this heaven sent salvation. Not head salvation. Knowing so many scriptures, knowing the word, but not having our hearts transformed. Heaven sent salvation transforms heart, transforms life, and changes all that need be changed in our life. He gave himself a ransom for all. Look at that again, for all. That means for everyone, for you, for me, and for everyone under the sun to be testified in due time. This Jesus who came from heaven, he lived a perfect life. In fact, that the reason he could be our savior. Because one sinner cannot save another sinner. Because somebody who fell into the well, into the well and the pit of iniquity and sin, and is still struggling for himself to come out, he cannot bring another person out of that well. But because he didn't fall into the well, he didn't fall into sin, he didn't do anything evil, God said, it's my beloved son, I will please with his life. And Pilate said, I have, I find no fault in him. And he challenged the people, which of you convinced me of sin? And because it was spotless, it was sinless, it was perfect, he lived a consistent, holy, righteous life. That's how he could be our savior. In First John, chapter 3 we're looking at verse 5 first john chapter 3 verse 5 and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins he was manifested for one reason manifested here in the world manifested here on earth he was manifested he came so that he will do one thing to take away our sins and when he's manifested to you that's what he will do he will take away your sin sin in your heart sin in your affection sin in your plan sin in your project sin from your character sin from your life he christ the savior came for only one thing that he will take away sin away from your life and in him is no sin in him is no sin in his nature he didn't have the nature of sin in his utterance he didn't have any speech that led to sin in his doctrine no sin in his life no sin in his interaction with anyone on earth no sin and he said the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me that is why and that is how he became the savior of the world and then in verse 6 we're told whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever at that time were those disciples and they were abiding in him 
they sinned not. None of those apostles will sneak out to go and have the pleasure of sin and then come back. I'm here, I'm a disciple. Never. None of those disciples stay with him, abiding in him, will go out and go and smoke a little and get high and then come back to him. I'm still a disciple. No. If anyone at that time, at this time, when we are saved, when we get the heaven sent salvation, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, sinneth habitually, sinneth by character, sinneth by plan, sinneth by association. Whosoever, whatever is great. Whatever his position, whatever his authority, and whatever his profession, and whatever church he belongs to, whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Verse 7. In verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. Little children can easily be deceived by things that glitter and they're not gold. Little children can easily be deceived by toys, the toys of this world. The toys that, you know, those children, what do they understand? There is an engine inside, there is a battery inside that controls the toy and the toy becomes the greatest thing in life in their sight they're deceived by the toys of this world and there are people like that who say they're christians who say they're born again who say they're saved and they can easily be de 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 deceived but it says little children those who are born again you become a child of God. You turn away from Satan, your master, your ruler, and your God. But you've turned unto the Lord. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. And there are people that voluntarily submit themselves to deceivers if you come to the church and to retreat like this where god wants you saved with heavenly salvation and then you allow a man a woman to deceive you maybe they secretly pass some erroneous doctrine to you in a trot or they give you an address and they tell you look at this side and there's so much error and deception there and instead of focusing your mind on the savior the only savior you are turned aside you have not obeyed the commandment that was to protect your life little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that doeth righteousness, that's what we look for in the life of anyone. They give testimony. I am saved. Look at their lives. I'm converted. Look at their lives. I'm born again. Look at their lives. I'm a teacher of the truth. Look at their lives. I am a leader leading people from earth to heaven. Don't be deceived. Look at their lives. Verse 8. In verse 8, it says, 
he that committed sin is of the devil they don't know they are the devil the Pharisees didn't know they are the devil what would he said why Abraham's son and we're children of God we be not born of fornication and Jesus thank God for Jesus I said thank God for Jesus amen yeah. you know if he if he were afraid of the Pharisees because you know those Pharisees they are the power of life and death and he, if he was afraid of them that they could cut short his life he will not say what he said but thank God that Jesus said ah you're children of God I know you are not he didn't say I don't think so he said I know you are not he said you of your father the devil and the deeds of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own because he is a liar and the father of liars so then he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested he was manifested to take away our sin and now we are told the explanation he was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil that the reason he was manifested he'll be manifested in your life he'll be manifested in your character old things will pass away all things will become new in your life as is as he is manifested in your life in jesus name he can and he will and he'll destroy every work of the devil in every life as we trust him as we believe in him in jesus name. you know when we're saved heaven recognizes that heaven rejoices in our salvation and the holy ghost comes to bear witness in our heart look at romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led of the spirit of god they are the sons of god when we become saved god abides with us jesus dwells in us and the holy ghost comes to witness in our hearts the holy ghost comes to lead us and to help us in this way of salvation and he says for as many as are led by the spirit of god now the spirit of god will not lead us into carnal things into fleshly things into the works of the flesh the spirit of god will not lead us into iniquity into immorality he will not lead us into idolatry and when we have heaven sent salvation we're led by the spirit of god all those who are led by the spirit of god not by the example of the world not by their carnal nature anymore not by their fleshly uh, kind of propensity anymore those who are led of the spirit of god they are the people that become 
the sons of God. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When you insult another person, the Spirit of God cannot bear witness. Uh, you know what your spirit, that's right. You're a child of God. When you're rebellious against the Word of God, the Spirit of God will not come to bear witness with you. That's right. Well done. You're a child of God. When you're unrighteous, when you're immoral, when your flesh drives you to do and to say or to dress in a way that exposes you to the opposite sex and makes you a source of temptation, the Spirit of God will not come and say, that's right, that's good, you're doing well, keep on doing that, you're a child of God, no. If the Spirit of God ever witnesses anyhow in your life, it will remind you, you are not converted yet. You are not born again yet. You are religious. How did you find yourself in a church that is called deeper life? And your life is shallow. And your life is sinful. When you are born again, the Spirit of God comes and He bears witness in your heart. That is the way of the children of God. It says, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We come to point number two. Point number two, justification. They obtain salvation from the Savior, he comes to justify us. The law of Moses could not justify. Our own self-effort could not justify us. But Jesus, the justifier, he came to justify us. He does not justify us in sin. He justifies us out of sin. Justification, you obtain salvation from the Savior. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have to believe in what Christ has done, in what Christ has come to do. We have to believe in the sacrifice that he made we have to believe that this is the savior the only savior and as we believe in him we trust him we don't trust ourselves we trust him we don't trust our works we trust him we don't trust our sacrifice i've sacrificed this I've sacrificed that. I've sacrificed that other thing. I gave up this position in the world that does not justify us. Justification comes by trusting in the atoning work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Justification, the obtained salvation from the Savior. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. You're justified, no more condemnation. Of course, if you're doing the same old sin every time, your condemnation remains. If you're living by the flesh, your, your condemnation remains. If you have a carnal mind, a carnal life, and a carnal man, mind cannot please God. You're not going to have 
peace with God. It's when you have repented, you turned away from sin, and in all sincerity, you're living in the goodness of the provision of the salvation of the Lord, and you're not offending God, rebelling against God. That's when peace with God comes. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It becomes not only your Savior, it becomes your Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. And He rules over your life. He rules over every action. Look at verse 2. And then it says in verse 2, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It tells us in Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 22, Romans chapter 4, verse 22, therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. He believed in God, that's Abraham. He trusted in God, that's Abraham, and that faith and that trust. But he didn't remain in the old country. He didn't remain with the old life partners. He left them and came out of the awe of the Chaldees. And then the Lord said, I'll make you a blessing. I'll make you to be a blessing to all the nations of the world. And he believed that. We believe after we have obeyed the Lord. We come out, come out of sin, come out of darkness, come out of our evil. And when we trust God like that, it justifies us. In verse 23, it says, Now, it was not reaching for his sake alone, but that it was imputed to him. Verse 24. In verse 24, but for us also. You come out of the old life like he came out of the awe of the Chaldees. You believe in his faithfulness. You trust the promise he has given you. And then he says, for us. For whom, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Verse 25. In verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses. It was delivered. For all the offenses were committed. And then he was raised again for our justification. Justification. After you are forgiven, after you are justified, the Lord looks at you just as if you never sinned. Because all the sins are now blotted out. All the sins are now forgiven. All the sins are now taken away. And you're justified by Him. Through Him. In Him. He is now our justifier. He was raised again for our justification. Romans chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 23 and verse 24. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned. And nobody can justify himself. All have sinned. Nobody can say, I never sinned. I never told a lie. I never did evil. I never stole. I never committed that. I ne never committed that. All have sinned. If anyone says, I have never sinned, 
he deceives himself and the truth is not in him all have sinned and come short of the glory of god verse 24 in verse 24 it says being justified freely that's the only way to be justified we come to the lord he paid the price and he paid the full price and his blood cleanses us from all sin and now we're justified freely by the grace by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus and after we're justified we abide in him we remain in him so that we can remain just and the faith that saved us that same faith keeps us saved hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 38 in hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 now the just the justified the one who possesses justification now the just shall live by faith the same faith that saved us we keep on living in that faith by that faith now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back i have position was seat on this on the seat of power position authority like the pharisees but in our hearts we've gone back in our lives we've gone back in a disposition we've gone back in the plans in the works in the activities of our hand we've gone back and he says if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him and our verse 39 says but we those of us who are steadfast but we those of us who know the only way to get to heaven is through christ the justifier and because we know that we're not coming in coming out we're not making the time of our presence in a sight making that a time of careless living of carnal living of corrupt living we know we have to be steadfast in christ steadfast in righteousness those who are like that we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul we go on and on in the lord saved and remaining saved he tells us in his word in acts chapter 13 reading there from verse 38 acts 13 verse 38 says be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man christ is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins verse 39 in verse 39 and by him all that believe by him not all that come to church they don't repent they don't believe not only not all the people that say we're christians born in a christian home that does not bring justification 
Not the people that say, I read my Bible every day. And the Bible they read every day does not transform their lives. No, they are not Christians. They are not born again. They are just religious. Any of the Pharisees, you can call them. And they will quote references in the Psalms and references in Exodus for you. Quoting the Bible reading the bible learning the bible if the bible does not penetrate your heart that does not make you a christian but the people that this heaven sent salvation has come to by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. You could read all those laws, the Ten Commandments, and all the other commandments in the Old Testament. Read and read and read the ceremonial commandments, the moral commandments, and the temple commandments. You could read them and obey them that will not save you the commandment for workers the commandment of working the commandment of your sectional leader you could keep that perfectly and never be saved it is not the keeping the commandment of moses or any other man that saves us it is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for him to wipe away your sin, to take away your sin, and to make you to live in newness of life that will bring salvation by him all the belief and justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses we need to come to him and as we come to him we receive the grace that makes us live like a child of God or to live we live in love we live in the love of God in first John chapter 4 verse 17 first John chapter 4 reading from verse 17 herein is a love made perfect your love cannot be made perfect outside christ you can try to love by natural love not perfect by principled love not perfect by personal decision i decide I love everyone. You love them superficially. When you are happy, when you are sad, when you are sorrowful, when you are missing something, when people do not give you what you think they ought to give you, the love will evaporate. But when you taste the love of God and Christ, who is the express manifestation of the love of God comes to dwell in your heart. That's when the evidence of salvation will be there. Herein is a love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world a sinner cannot say that a backslider cannot say that a religious man a religious woman cannot say that a person that is just coming and coming coming to the church no lie changed he cannot say that because as he is so are we in this world verse 18 in verse 18 there is no fear in love 
There is no fear in love. If you want your wife to fear you, your love is not perfect. Your act, your action, you're doing everything so that like your past, old, mother, feared, your father, but you know there's no born again experience in the home. Like your mother feared your father. I want her to fear me. The love of Christ is not there. There is no fear in love. And there is no love in fear. If your parents fear you, you're unfortunate. Because there's no love in fear. There's no fear in love. If your neighbors fear you, and you want them to fear you, you want any time you pass, any time you come, you want the thunder of fear to strike their heart. You're not of Christ. You're not born again. You're not going to heaven. It takes love, love without fear to get to heaven. If you want your seniors outside the church or in the church to fear you, you're not born again. You're here to produce the property, the plant of the devil. The devil wants everyone to fear him. And that's how the world behaves. You fear the devil. But when you come to Christ and the Lord walks in your heart and you are saved by love, the love of Christ in the heart of man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. When you are saved by love, you are saved to love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. Fear has torment. It torments the heart. The heart begins to palpitate fear has torment fear torments the brain the mind the things you wanted to say before for the good of the people you can't say them you're forgotten them because fear brings forgetfulness in the brain fear makes you to miss your steps an athlete is running and then somebody from the audience says something that gets into him he will miss his step he will lose the race fear has torment you're taking an exam suddenly you remember something that daddy said mommy said that brings panic and fear in your heart you're not likely to pass that exam fear has torment but when we love with perfect love christ-like love and we love him as he has loved us we are prayed seamlessly because now there is no fear it gives you assurance and gives you boldness he says he that feareth is not made perfect in love he that feareth he that feareth sinners is not made perfect in love he cannot tell all the sinners what they ought to hear to be saved he that fears members of the church 
is not made perfect in love he cannot serve them he cannot minister to them he cannot show them the way of holiness and the way of sanctification is too fearful fidgeting he cannot declare the way to heaven with all his heart he that fears the sick people he cannot minister actually in love he has to pray because I'm afraid if I don't pray like this, they might do this against me. He's not praying with his heart. He's not praying with faith. He wants us to understand that when we're children of God, when we're justified by the Lord, it takes fear away from our heart. And whatever we do, we do it because of the love of god not because if i don't do that i'll face this if the church is like that and if you are contributing to fearfulness fidgeting fretting in the church you're not a good instrument in the church whatever your area of work find out what's your purpose find out what the reason why you do what you do why you say what you say is he to make the people fear you you are not here to serve god you are here to serve your own pride there is no fear in love and there's no love in fear but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love we'll come to point number three here justified the justified the saved the people who have come to the lord and the lord has taken away their guilt and their condemnation the justified the obedient soul after salvation after we got saved after we received that heaven sent salvation you know what it does it gives us a heart a life obedient to his word we're told in hebrews chapter 5 Reading there from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And being made perfect, talking about Christ, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Eternal salvation. And to all those that obey him, there is no eternal security, eternal salvation for all those that disobey him, that rebel against him, that contradict his word, that live sinful lives uh -uh. there's no eternal security for them already we have read if any man draw back into disobedience into lawlessness if any man draw back my soul that God talking shall have no pleasure in him and then the people that have eternal salvation are the people that obey him. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively hope 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. The people who are not saved, they don't have their names in heaven. They don't have any inheritance in heaven. They don't have any incorruptible, undefiled inheritance in heaven. They of the earth, earthly. They of the world, carnal. They of earth, they corrupt. All the inheritance they are going to have, they have here on earth. When they die, they go to that other side, dark, fiery, tormenting, and the people there, they suffer and suffer. There's no inheritance in hell. But the people who come to know the Lord, they've given their hearts, their lives unto the Lord, and they have that salvation that makes them obedient to the word of the Lord. They have an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for them. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God. They are not kept in sin. They are kept away from sin. They are not kept in the works of the flesh. They are kept away from the works of the flesh. They are not kept in the works of the devil. They are kept away from the works of the devil. They are not kept in disobedience. They are kept in obedience to the word of the Lord. They are not kept in unrighteousness. They are kept in righteousness. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time look at verse 14 as obedient children those are the only kind of children god has disobedient children are away from home the prodigal sons prodigal daughters they are off in the far country eating the husks of the swine. They are in, into the whale's belly. Their rebellion, their disobedience has sent them far to the bottom of the sea. They've lost the birthright. They're like Esau, but the ones that remain children of God, that abide children of God, that can profess the children of God, the obedient children. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. In verse 15, what it says, as he, 1-5, verse 15 in verse 15 but as he which has called you is holy those are real children so be ye holy in all manner of conversation verse 16 because it is written be ye holy for i am holy those are the real children of God. They believe in the Lord. They are born again because in John chapter 3, reading from verse 3, John chapter 3, verse 3, 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a leader in a synagogue, a preacher among the commonwealth of Israel, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, born afresh, born anew. Now, if a person is not born again, he will be acting like those who are born the first time, born of the flesh. You see, did my mother conceive me, and in sin was I born? They'll be sinning. They go astray from the womb, telling lies. Those who are born only once, born natural. They have not been born again. They'll be acting and living like the people who are born of the flesh. But when you realize the first birth alone, will not take you to the eternal presence of God. And you come to the Lord, you say, I'm sorry for the works of the flesh. I'm sorry for the attitude and the action that is coming from the fleshly birth. And now you trust in the Lord. You're born again, born afresh, born anew born from heaven from above except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god look at verse five in verse five jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water the water of the word and of the spirit he cannot may come to church he can not may join a church he can not he might walk his way through by contacts i know him he knows me and become a worker a server an important personality in the visible church but except he be born again he cannot see cannot enter the kingdom of god hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 1 hebrews chapter 2 Verse 1, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time, lest at any time, at a time when I am on duty, and the watch is coming forth. Any time, the time I am on duty, I am hearing sound, but I'm not hearing the word that is being preached. He's so committed to the work of the Lord. He doesn't have a heart for the Lord of the work. Let's at any time, at the time of marriage, at the time of wedding, some people forget everything they've ever heard, everything they've ever known. At the time of child birth, child dedication, some people forget everything they ever learned. At the time of an interview, they forget, let no lie, corrupt word proceed out of your mouth 
and for that interview in church or at work they forget everything they have learned let's start any time at the time of temptation they forget everything they ever learned at the time of prayer they forget everything they have heard in the message now they pray 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 but the usual prayer asking for the usual sin and the real sin the lord has spoken about in the message they have forgotten he says therefore we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep look at verse 2 for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression god does not pass by any transgression the one you do outside that's bad you know and the one you come to do in his very presence what two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst of them you come to church you come to the assembly of the gathering of the people of god and you carry your rebellion from the office into the church it does not pass by any transgression how about the one you're doing in his presence and he says every disobedience receives a just recompense of reward verse 3 how shall we escape judgment how shall we escape the fury and the wrath of god how shall we escape everlasting burning in the lake of fire how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him he wants us to have heaven saint salvation he wants to have life us to have life transforming salvation he wants us to have the salvation that goes beyond religion matthew chapter 5 verse 20 in matthew chapter 5 verse 20 here the lord jesus christ affirmed and confirmed but i say unto you that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees he shall in no wise in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven what the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees external righteousness washing the hand the took hygiene to become religion clothing themselves a particular way they took the badge of identification that's a pharisee it's a badge of identification that's that church a badge of identification they took the badge for being born again for being children of god and jesus said except you have inward righteousness except you have the internal righteousness except you have the spiritual life transforming spiritual supernatural righteousness giving from heaven and coming through christ except 
the righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and of the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He wants our lives to show the righteousness by the cross from Christ coming from Calvary. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, Matthew 12, reading from verse 36, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Christ said, every idle word, I don't accept that idle word. I don't believe that idle word. I'm not going to pray like that idle word. Whatever anybody says, I'm born again, I'm born again. Lying doesn't disturb me. Deception doesn't disturb me. Idle word. I don't accept him as my teacher, my leader. Whatever I read from the Bible, that's his business. Idle word. I won't change. I will keep on doing what I'm doing and he will be surprised I will get to heaven. No, you won't. If the word of God is true, you won't. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You will in no wise, in no case, get to heaven. Every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37, in verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified. Did you hear about being born again? Yes, I did. What did you do about it? Nothing. Why didn't you do anything at that time? I was tired. I was bored. I was angry. I was unhappy. Those words will judge you. You heard that the only way to get to heaven is to be born again. And at the time when salvation is free, when justification is available. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm not happy. It says, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You heard about the gift of God, the gift of eternal life, and the gift of his salvation. And you know your life, you know you've gone astray and you did not repair. You did not repent. You did not restore. You did not make right the things that are wrong in your life and have the grace of God to be who he wants you to be. By thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. He doesn't want us condemned. He wants us to take the word of salvation. Take it serious. Believe it in the heart. And then after that salvation, you allow him to order your steps, to guide your steps, to guide your conversation, to guide your conduct so that you'll be living a life pleasing unto the Lord until that final day. Psalm 119. Reading there from verse 33. Psalm 1, 133. Psalm 119. 
verse 133 order my steps in thy word those are candidates for heaven order my steps in thy word those are candidates for transformation by the hand and the power of the lord those who order their steps by their habit they are not candidates for heaven those who order their lives by carnality they are not candidates for heaven those who order their steps by habitual things i have always done and they are sinful they are not candidates for heaven they are candidates for hell for the other side but the people that come and they say i've heard the word of god i realize my steps my life my conduct my conversation my character my behavior my lifestyle my relationship and my response or reaction and my attitude shall be ordered by the words of the lord those are the people that recognize why christ came and they want to have a manifestation the reason why the lord came and they want to have the transformational salvation in their lives and the lord will answer their prayer and the lord will answer your prayer Amen. when you forsake that habit habit of rebellion habit of disobedience habit of carnality when you forsake that and you say i came because I wanted to hear the truth and I want to get to heaven. And now you pray, order my steps in thy word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Those are candidates for heaven. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me those are the truly born again that in my life in all the steps i take in all the things i do lord i invite you into my heart if you are not saved you get saved you get justified get free from sin and then your conduct character conversation after that Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion, have authority, have power, have the final say in my life. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Want to bring your heart your soul, your mind, you want to have, bring all your personality before the Lord in prayer. You remember, Jesus is the only Savior of all sinners. You remember, justification is obtained salvation from the Savior. I'm sure you remember. The justified, the obedient soul after the experience of salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> 